Good morning, students. Welcome to the discussion of the chapter number three. Why do we need parliament? In this chapter, we are going to gain the sense or the essential rational thinking of why the parliamentary form of government has been adopted in our country to govern itself. In modern politics and history, a parliament is a legislative body which is elected, and in a modern parliament, it has a three general functions: that is, representing the electorate making laws and overseeing the government what is the role of parliament here indian parliament is an expression of faith that people of india have in principle of democracy the principle of democracy are the participation by people in decision making process of process and government by consent the parliament in our system has immense power as it is the representative of the people the people and democracy are the citizen who play who plays an integral part of the democracy the people elect few candidates who represent their collective voices in the parliament the next we are going to draw about the functions of the parliament india has numerous constituencies each of these constituencies elect one person to the parliament the candidates who contest election usually belong to different political parties these candidates become member of parliament or mps once election to once elected to the parliament and they have taken the player and if they have taken their seats they have to follow certain rules and instruction now coming on to the part how the government has is selected the national government how it is selected look the parliament of india consists of the three parts that is the president rajya sabha and lok sabha so after the lok sabha a list a election a list is prepared showing how many mps belong to each political party before i come to i come on to the next slide i wanted to make clear that lok sabha is the lower house of the parliament and rajya sabha is the upper one in lok sabha the people here are directly elected to this assembly and in rajya sabha they are indirectly elected there are 543 elected members in lok sabha plus two anglo indians are nominated for political party to form the government they must have majority of elected mps a majority party should have at least half the number that is 272 member or more this means the present time the government which is sitting in the center must have 272 or more than it member elected members in the parliament thus they have become the central uh, central government the opposition in parliament is formed by all the political party that opposes the majority party coalition formed the largest among these parties is called the opposition party one of the most important function of the lok sabha is to select the executive the executive is a group of persons or people who work together to implement the law made by the parliament which we use the term government the prime minister of india is the leader of the ruling party in the lok sabha when two or more than two different political parties join together to form a government it is known as coalition government some example of the present time of the coalition government at the state level we can see in maharashtra the rajya sabha the upper house of the parliament it is primarily function as the representative of the states of india in the parliament it has an important role in reviewing and altering the laws initiated by the lok sabha rajya sabha can also initiate legislation legislation a bill is required to pass through the rajya sabha in order to become a law the member of the rajya sabha are elected by the elected members of the legislative assembly that is why i have seen i have said it before that the people of rajya sabha are indirectly elected there are 233 elected members plus 12 members nominated by the president to control guide and inform the government the parliament begins that is how the function of parliament work right now i'm talking about how it runs itself the parliament the parliament begins with the question hour 
the question r is an important mechanism through which mps can elicit information about the working of the government by asking the question from the government and and this is how the present and power government get to know about its shortcoming in all matters dealing with finances the parliament's approval is crucial for the government the other more major aspect is of law making law making is a significant function of the parliament as it is there for the security safety and for the beneficial of the people only in the country so basically who are the people in the parliament parliament now has more and more different people from the different background there has also been an increase in political participation from the dalits and backward classes some seats are reserved in parliament for scs and sts similarly there is a reservation of seats for women also which encourages the participation of these people into the decision making process or process of the country by this i conclude the chapter number 3 why do we need 